Yes, YouTube, welcome to video three. Today, we have a big team session going down. We've got the Studio Six girls here with us today, and we are gonna be showcasing what a capacity session is here at the TC. We're also gonna be doing a little bit of behind the scenes slash meet the team. So we'll be going around each person and you'll get a little insight as to what it is that they do here. If you're a member and you're late, you have one minute and you roll the spice. This is my good. Whatever. Come to the dice, attempt to the challenge or the punishment in this situation. TC group, which means you stitch the whole team up. Everyone who's in your session, we've got burpees, we've got run to unit 31 and back, we've got bike there. Who Come on. So we're going to go through two. 15 minute time caps, all right, in which we're looking to achieve max distance either on the bike erg or ski, row, or short bike, depending on what will be available at the time. So, what we're going to do is we'll split off into two teams. One team will start at A, second team will start at B, and then we will swap afterwards. Okay, you're going to do a max distance on the bike erg, like I say, and then max distance, we'll choose the ski or the row. After every effort individually, you're then going to go through the set of movements, so we're going to go through a farmer's carry, which is just going to be inside, we're going to go for six lengths, so it'll be 60 metres in total. Um, when it comes to doing it on the day, the lads will be doing it outside, but just to keep it all indoors, we're going to do 60 metres farmer's carry, and then into a 200 metre run, out the door, unit 31 and back, and you must check back in before you go back onto the bike with 20 body weight squats, go for the first one. So, there should always be somebody on that bike accumulating distance as much as you can and ideally you want to try and get through all of this as quick as you can so you can get back and get back on that bike um, so in other words on the bike if you're struggling there's enough people to get through um, on that bike and again it'll be scored off the max distance the same mark the t-shirt's tucked in my team's work are you on the other team? All the four Gs. Sammy, you're Are you on my team? Joe, Joe, Steve. Everyone's starting up a ball teacher. You're on their team. You can play me so much. The divide. I love that split. I love that people split. You're getting smoked. You're getting smoked. Mentally weak. Mentally weak. Me too. Look at those box jumpers. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Yeah, we'll start. I had to carry you for that. Then we'll start. I'm a fucking Talking big now when he's on the other team. How long are you going to be till Ross says, I'm going to bat just to get one. And then when you come back, two people stay. Three people will then go back to the 31 again. Come on, boys. Harrison, you'll get to see. It's going to be a big 10. Yeah.
Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Sammy H, aka Hangomi, aka Persian Powerhouse. I'm uh, one of the junior coaches at the TC. I've been here two years, and my main roles and responsibilities is looking after the TC social media as well as coaching on the gym floor and continuing to learn on uh, development. Paul G, Wowza, that's all I do after you dying. Introduce yourself to YouTube, Steve. I'm Steve. I'm one of the head coaches at TC. Um, currently going through next week's capacity session. We do every Wednesday. We always try and test the product so we know what the boy's going to go through. Ten seconds left. So, I'm known as putting Harry Vaughn and I love fizz. All I do is fizz, cook, and try and send it. Introduce yourself please, Marcus. Are you joking? <laughs> My name's Marcus. I'm a fucking animal. I'm a fucking animal. <laughs> yes! Uh, don't fucking move! Two points! I'm against it, Anthony! 4 3 0 100 k still lose! Fucking fucking! And that was 1 1. I'm gonna have to do 30 win! See you, man! 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 See you, so be on the skin. Good. I'm a little bit of a Look like you were fresh. Fresh in your beast by 40 minutes. I'm fucking buzzing if you beat them, you know. Oh, God. You had no right to win there, Cole. No right. That was the OG's there, you know. We didn't it? Where's the word that OG steel. OG team. Built different. It's in the veins. Winning. Bruh! <laughs> Introduce the team. Um, not everyone was in the video, obviously. So I'd like to kind of do a little bit of a... I'll not keep you too long, but a deeper 
more detailed run through of the team, I guess, from top to bottom. I mean, we were, we're sitting at, if you include me, seven coaches now. We've got someone starting in November um, in operations and, and administration role, um, which I'm looking forward to. That'll be, I think that'll be a, the next step for us in the business. I think things will start happening quicker um, and, and it will allow me to focus on things that are going to grow certain aspects and elements of the business and the team um, and not have to worry about the nitty gritties and stuff and, and things like that. So looking forward to that. From the top, I guess, so from, from day one, obviously, it was myself um, who opened the gym. Um, and then very shortly, I think, Steve is someone who always said when I used to work in the PFC that I love what you're on, your energy and whatnot and your mindset and if there's ever something that you go and do, I would love to be part of it, which was sick because um, I think it's always a massive thing for a personal trainer to kind of drop their own, the thing that they've created almost, like their own name um, towards their own coaching product. We all have an element of ego, so that was a big step and is a big step for every single coach who comes here. It's part of their own journey. Um, so Steve very quickly did that and got over that quite quickly. Um, so I think from, I'd probably say from month two, the man behind the camera, Lewis, was there from day one, so he'll know. Probably month two, Steve started to PT his clients and then fly over straight to the TC and help us on a night time when the classes were more, or when the sessions were more busy. Um... And then I think after four or five months time, that role then became a full-time role, which was again, another big step financially. Um, but also again, from him personally to drop his own client who we've worked with for years and then come on board here and just be fully focused on TC. But um, yeah, we definitely wouldn't be where we are today without Steve, without him being able to adopt that mindset early on. Um, and obviously his knowledge and, and tenacity and work rate allowed us to grow and, ca and cope with that growth quite quickly. So um, we owe a lot to him. Person three to come in was actually someone who was experienced in the TEC in its first form, which was Saman. Um, he was doing our 6 a.m. sessions at PFC, which is the gym in Sunderland, which is where the training club pretty much started. Um, I always remember this comment. It's funny as fuck. Like, the way I used to run the TEC was Monday, Wednesday, Friday sessions. The lads would have to pay for a time slot across those three days. They trained three times a week. And Saman was the only person in at 6 a.m. Um, on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And it was just a one-to-one, -one, basically. But it was meant to be. It was sold as one-to-four, one to one-to-six. So I always remember he used to say, oh, see, do I have to, uh, do I have to pay more because I'm the only one here? I was like, no, mate, that's not your problem. That's my problem to fill the spaces. Um, so Saman was a mem like has, has been around for a long time. Um, he used to come and get his hair cut in the barber shop and whatnot, and he'd always try and sponge off me a little bit, bless him. <laughs> but he's an amazing kid, unbelievable vibe, energy, again, hunger to be the, the best possible version of himself. Um, and in, I think it was 2021, December of, he come on board as our third full-time member of staff, if I include myself. Shortly after that, we had an intake in which Harrison was, and Brett did the the. The 30 day trial in January of 2022. Um, at the end of the trial, I called Harrison um, and I said, Listen, I think you are what we need in this building next um, as coach four. He was very surprised, taken aback, low in confidence. I know he'd had coaching experience before. Uh, he looked the part and was wired a certain way again to be the best version of himself. Which for me, when we're hiring, I look at people at that moment in time, I look at people first. Have they got the right mindset? Have they got the right attitude? Can we adopt and grow them as coaches based on their personality? Harrison was the man. Um, so he'd come in in January of 2022, I believe. Um, and then shortly after being a member here for three months, three, four months, Brett then became our fourth. He approached me and said, if there's ever a job going here, um, again, please can I be involved in this because this is sick. He was an online coach. Um, vast, vast knowledge and experience of 10 years, I believe, he's in the industry now. Um, and he was our fourth coach to come on board. Um, sorry, fifth. And then from there, that was our team. <clears throat> we ran with it for some time. Cole, who was also a client of mine back in the day, or for a long time, he was 15 when he started with me, worked with him for three, four years. Um, he started being a PT at JD, and then it just so happened that he applied for a job, um, didn't get it sent him away, give him some things to focus on. He then, we then had a conversation where I knew, I always knew Cole was going to work here deep down. Um, his mindset and the way he is as a human is just like, you don't find 
many people like him. Um, and for him to be so fucking hungry to learn at such a young age, which is obviously the only way to be, um, it was amazing to bring him on board as coach. Six, I think we're up to now. And then most recently, Marcus, again, who's gone through a period of, of seeing the, putting the training club on a pedestal. He actually said this year that in January, um, he identified the training club as a place that he'd want to come and work, which is amazing. So we're starting to attract coaches now who want to be here um, and made it his mission to be here. Um, so yeah, he, he's now dropped his own clients, dropped his own brand again, which is a big step for people. And he's now come fully on board um, as a full-time coach here. And he will be mainly focusing on HQ, delivering coaching sessions, working with his cohort of members. And also now we've got the resources and his knowledge we're going to push them into the online space as well, which is pretty sick. So we've got a very well-rounded team. Um, we've only been a team of what we are now of seven for about three months now. So as always with teams, it brings its own challenges, its big personalities. Everyone wants to be progressing. Um, and that is obviously something that falls on my plate to nurture that. Um, I see it as my job now to mentor these people within their roles, within their careers, and make sure that the training club is always pushing to a level allows growth, allows people to work up the ladder within the company um, as we possibly go on to bigger and better things, more sites, possibly, who knows. Um, so yeah, as long as everyone's paid, stimulated, happy um, and, and progressing, both personally and professionally, I am a happy man. So Ross, we've had a question on the previous video. Mm -hmm. So, it said that your gym looks good. Yeah. But how did you plan for it? And what problems did you face while setting up the gym? First and foremost, thank you for seeing the gym look good. Um, so I think I've got, I've got three things I'd probably like to mention here. Um, I think first and foremost, obviously the, the initial investment, the financing side of it, um, and the budgeting factor. Obviously when you're opening a gym, especially me at my age, but I guess most people who, done it, who do it, I've never really had to budget before for such a big responsibility. And I think um, that is like a skill that you learn over time. Um, so sticking within a budget so that you don't go bust before you even start was for me quite challenging. Um, the second thing, I think something that's coming to light now more than anything, in fact, no, even in the beginning, it's important because it's, it's again, it's new learnings, it's new, new responsibilities. I think managing and growing a team is something that no one can teach you. It's like, there's not a script for that at all. So you've just got to kind of go with the floor. You've got to learn and sponge off everyone who's done it or are doing it now. Um, managing the personality side of things, um, knowing how to deliver feedback while still trying to grow a business side of it as well, because your people are your business really. Your coaching team is the business. Without them, you don't grow. Um, so yeah, I think that was a challenge and a, I think it will continue to be for the people who are more into their journey within a management role, whether it is within gym ownership, they always say staffing is the hardest thing ever. And I think it's probably the case for most, most um, industries, I guess. Um, the last thing that I would say that was tough was probably going from, this might sound stupid really, because you think it would be easy to get your first kind of hundred members, but I think going from 50 to 100 was really challenging for us um, because I would say on reflection now, we were probably winging it a little bit. I think where a lot of gym owners go wrong is they don't have a powerful or meaningful enough mission or um, like the, the vision isn't big enough or the language and the, and the why behind the, the being of the gym or the people isn't strong enough. So like for me, you can't really attract staff if you don't have a, um, like a deeper meaning to the name above the door. You can't. If you don't have a story to why you're doing something, why would a member or a, a person come to you basically and, and embed themselves within that? Um, I think that's something that people need to focus on a lot and we invested heavily on getting the answers to that as well. Um, and I think when we started, becoming, we come up with a clear understanding as to who we are, what we stand for, what we want to be known for and what message and what language to use to display that best. I think that's when we've seen our growth kind of, um, well, the rapid growth that we did see. So I think from when we did that, from about 50 to 150, happened quite quick. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. Um, they are probably the three things that I found hardest in the, in the beginning and probably still to this day do in some respect.
Right guys, so that is the end of video three. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a little something a little bit different, nice and short, straight to the point. Your chance to meet the team, see exactly who it is behind this amazing brand, the training club. Um, stick around for more. Like, subscribe, comment, follow, whatever the fuck you do, I still don't know yet. And I'll see you at the next one. <laughs>